The following program is classified M. It may contain coarse language, sexual references and adult themes. In breaking news, it appears we have a result in the leadership spill at the offices of Tonightly. Nina Oyama and Greg Larson, both challenging host Tom Ballard for the top spot. It seems the Tonightly whip is about to address the press. Thank you very much. The results are as follows. Tom Ballard, yuck, one vote. A bit desperate. Nina Oyama and Greg Larson, 38 votes apiece. That means that Nina and Greg are the new hosts of Tonightly. Thank you very much. Oh, are there any jobs going at all? Well, there you have it. Tom Ballard, seen here never being funny, has been replaced by both Greg Larson and Nina Oyama, seen here being a fresh approach. <laughs> to Tonightly. My name Nina. Hi Greg. We host Tonightly now. And we're going to have a good fun. Yes, thank you. For those worried, Tom is still around. He's just been moved to the back bench. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, good on him. Yeah, so tonight we'll be joined by the hilarious musical comedy quintet Songtourage. And, <laughs> and I want to say right off the bat, we love the ABC. Yes, we, we really do. defund... Sorry, we defin definitely <laughs> love the ABC. We love our auntie. She's a delicious old bird. Yum, yum. yum, yum. <laughs> we, we mean it, though. Um, look, no, no, seriously. We really think that the ABC does such a great job and, and we've been worried lately, you know, because it feels like the ABC is under threat. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of people are actually calling to defund the ABC, but the thing is, they don't realise exactly what it is the ABC does. Exactly. You see, we're comedians and if... We make live comedy or make comedy for, you know, something like Netflix or HBO or what have you. The only thing that would matter is if our comedy was good and funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what people care about. Yeah, but not the ABC. No. <laughs> the ABC doesn't worry about what's good or funny. They care about whether comedy adheres to a rigorous framework of editorial and legal policies. <laughs> yeah. And in a way, Greg, isn't that the best comedy of all? I think... yes. <laughs> And the ABC was worried that with us hosting, we were going to get a bit too loose and crazy. That is not so, ABC. No, absolutely not. We are going to play ball. So mm. for our monologue, we made sure to get all these jokes rigorously, rigorously checked by the producers, the editorial team, heads of department, the legal department. That's right. Around 30 to 40 ABC staff have had their hands on these jokes and mm -hmm. they're all the better for they it. They absolutely are. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, <laughs> here are our ABC-approved monologue jokes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here, first joke off the off the bat. What's the deal with airline food? <laughs> the deal is they make the best of a bad situation. <laughs> Thirty thousand feet in the air, cramped conditions. It's a you know they're doing a good job. Yeah. So that's the whole joke. Not crazy funny, but you know. It's it's factually correct. Factually correct. It's, um, yeah, I think good, good on the airlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah good well, on well done. Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, a little bit of satire here. A bit oh, of, yeah, biting comedy, yeah. biting political comedy even. Yeah. Um, Malcolm Turnbull. I've heard that name before. <laughs> Malcolm Turnbull. I think the last part of his name is fitting. Mm. Bull. As in bull S word. <laughs> oh, the ABC we can, said we can swear, but only a certain number of times. So we're actually saving up our sweary words for a joke that's near the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, um, bull. <laughs> the joke continues on. Yeah. Um, bull S word, because some people might say, in their opinion, mm -hmm. that some of Turnbull's policies are a little bit of bull. Oh, also for balance, Bill Shorten is also a bit short on credibility. According oh, to God. some. That's <laughs> yeah. the okay, whole joke. Okay. It's a politician get pun. Next joke. It's good. Let's it's just good. get through this. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Boy. Boy. <laughs> that Peter Dutton sure is good or bad. Depending. 
D yeah, d depending on your perspective. Yeah, now, I'm not saying Peter Dutton's an idiot. No. I'm certainly not saying that or even implying it in any way. Defamation, no. I'm just saying... All I'm saying, imagine if Peter Dutton wore a, some kind of silly hat. <laughs> yeah, that would be really funny. I'm, not, I'm also not implying that he's of such low character as to warrant wearing a silly hat. I'm simply saying it might be humorous if he was in a silly and inoffensive hat. Yeah, oh... <laughs> Oh, also, imagine Bill Shorten in the hat and Richard Di Natale and yeah, we need to da cover David Lyonhouse, Sarah Hazenhouse, like all of them. Whole range of people the political spectrum wearing humorous hats. This hats. is a great. This is a great monologue. Yeah, yeah this, it's... Is... <laughs> this this is our Nanette. Yeah. Is... <laughs> all right. Uh, last last joke here, and we just want to point out that an ACMA investigation ruled that this joke was okay. So the precedent has been set. It's okay. been cleared. The, this yeah, this before. joke has been cleared by an, an ACMA investigation. Yeah. Last joke. Corey Bernardi, Kevin Bailey, and everyone Wait, stop, at the stop. Australian Conservatives are a bunch of. You what? can't. You can't say that. You can't say that. What? So, who are you? I'm the OVC legal team. Uh. Well, the story checks out. I mean. Yeah. All right. It's time to start the show properly. Let's get into the news. Welcome to the nightly, everybody. <laughs> Okay, obviously the big news today, the news on everyone's lips, BuzzFeed is asking how many types of candy can you name? Mars bar. Milky Way. Smarties. Skittles. Mentos. M&M's. Jelly beans. Gummy bears. Extra. That's a gum, not a candy. Toblerone. Um, Chupa Chups. Oh. Whiz Fizz. Gobstoppers. <laughs> Kit Kat. The Teeth. Nerds. Candy Cane. Chewy Banana. Clinkers. Almonds. Turkey. Okay, hang on, hang on. Almonds aren't a candy. Yeah, but they're delicious. So no, you, you know. fucked it up. Next story. Okay, I was on a Sorry, roll. Sorry, Trending number one on BuzzFeed today is a report that says 10 people who lost 50 plus pounds share their best tips for getting started. Tip number six is to write a letter to yourself on why you should lose weight. So, I've written a letter to Greg about why he should lose weight. But that, no, but that's not the literally... Dear what... Greg, it's, it's, okay. you look like shit and you have a gallstone. Love, Nina. Okay, so yeah, it, it said write a letter to yourself. So, P.S. Not... Okay, oh, man. P.S. Lose some weight, you idiot. Everyone's talking about how you're addicted to sugar. You're a big fucker. Okay, well, I've written, really bloody... I've written a letter to you, Just... Nina okay. Oyama. Right. Oh, Coming. please, Nina Oyama, stop disrespecting Greg. Greg is actually one of the coolest cats going around in the in the. What, in what the you haven't even written a letter? Well, give me, give me that. It's... This is just... This is just a list of candies. Yeah, I know. It's a list that I was not finished reading. Look, there's some pictures of almonds at yeah. the bottom. What yeah. is that? God's, God's candy. Oh, for fuck's sake, we're moving on. We're new hosts. You know, we've got to talk about other news. Mm -hmm. So in viral news, 29 things to help you impress everyone you know. Skittles. Gobstoppers. No! Oh. OK. Politics, then, which you can't link to candy. You don't know that. <laughs> People are asking. <laughs> people Just... are asking that. <laughs> We're not going to cut. We're going to keep going. Go on. People, people are asking the big questions about Peter Dutton right now. Hey, Peter yeah. Dutton, hot or not? Oh, uh, I mean, not. I know you want to, but I know you want to keep talking about it. So this is me bringing both topics like together, it. right? It's objective, not hot to me, but for complicated reasons. Malcolm Turnbull, hot or not? Um. He's suave. Is there a suave? You just button? said he was hot. That's hot. Yeah, yeah I, I love suave. Malcolm. I'd fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah, for sure. Malcolm Turnbull spit roast. Malcolm Turnbull spit, spit roast. roast. Malcolm Turnbull spit, spit roast. roast. One in the back. One in the back. <laughs> One in the back. <laughs> One in the back. <laughs> Malcolm Turnbull spit. Oh, Ray we're hitting comedy. Stride. We're hitting Ray's comedy. Stride. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Settle down. Since the leadership spill, Peter Dutton has been on a PR exercise to convince us all he's a normal person. Here he is on Sky News. The immigration portfolio, you're defined by Nauru and Manus. The opportunity for me as you know, a backbencher now uh, is to, you know, to, to talk to people about a lighter side. I think I've, you know, got a self-deprecating sense of humour. He's so self-deprecating. Oh, I know. He's always like, oh, I'm Peter Dutton, I'm so weird. <laughs> like, deporting refugees, it's like, I hate myself. Ah, oh, so awkward. Oh. I know. It's, I find it really bizarre when Peter, Dunt, Peter Dutton attempts to humanise himself. I know. He should just first concentrate on having human eyes. <laughs> great stuff. Thank that you, is Greg. absolutely great stuff. I love it. <laughs> 
A man in Western Australia is set to face drug charges after officers seized 25 cannabis plants from his home. Which is bad, because he didn't share any of it with me! <laughs> I'll have to chip oh, on. <laughs> OK. Funny, funny. All right, man. In Kardashian news, Kim and Kanye might have a fourth baby soon. Which is bad, because they didn't share it with me! <laughs> I'll have to eat babies is the gag. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'll eat a human okay, baby. Just... <laughs> no one wants to see that. All right, in shows that haven't been axed yet, mm -hmm. news... <laughs> Survivor was on last night. Yeah, which is bad, because they didn't share it with me! Oh, that makes literally no sense. Yeah, I know, it's like a comedy rule of threes. I it didn't mean anything, though. I had no fuck up, surprise. The new, okay, new well. movie news, Train Spotting director Danny Boyle has quit the new James Bond movie over creative differences. Supposedly, the studio didn't like the scene in which James Bond shoots heroin into his eyeball and swims around in a toilet of shit looking for his magic spy cufflinks or whatever the... Who gives a shit? It's James Bond. Exactly. I mean, who cares about James Bond these days anyway? He's like an outdated, violent misogynist. An outdated, violent misogynist. So, get ready for his new primetime show on Sky News. <laughs> Brave comedy. And in health news, coconut oil is poison. I knew it. A Harvard medical professor says the health fad is one of the worst foods you can ever eat, and that even means lard is better. And you said that investing in lard was a bad idea. <laughs> no, Greg, I said eating lard was a bad idea. Yeah, that's, that's probably why I have a gallstone. That's exactly why you have a gallstone. I really, I really do anyway, have a gallstone. Anyway, speaking of huge masses... <laughs> Some climate change news. The Arctic's strongest sea ice has broken up for the first time on record. But don't worry, sea ice. There's plenty more sea ice in the sea. There's actually not because of global warming. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, we're brave. You know racism's so bad as well? Charlie really Pickering would it. never say this. Yeah, we'll say, yeah. And the news story today that dominated the Courier Mail. Six dinners for $35. <laughs> what a great deal. That's an advert. Why are you so obsessed with food, Shut Greg? Up. Residents of Camberdown, Victoria, are angry about plans for a solar farm built nearby, which would be bigger than the one, uh, bigger than the, 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 the let's time to get time to stop Greg, now. Time to learn to read. <laughs> Have another crack. <laughs> are we stopping or are we going? Are we, are we, are going? we continuing? Loose and live. Let's just fucking go. <laughs> Plans for a solar farm, the farm would be bigger than the town. Crazy, and they're angry about it. What, a solar farm? <laughs> what the fuck? They're going to plant a whole bunch of suns? That's a terrible idea. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. What a funny gag. All right. All right. <laughs> Now for some cute animal news. A Gold Coast man had a close call with a humpback whale which swam by his jet ski. Greg, what were you doing swimming around jet skis in the Gold Coast, you fat fuck? That's it, Nina! I'm bloody sick of it! I'm done! You're fat shaming me all no. the time! I hate it! Be body positive! You're a bee! No, no, Greg. You know what? If I wanted to, I would eat anything that I wanted. But the truth, Greg, is if there was a woman on TV and she was your size, like, you know, her body would automatically become politicised. And I just, I'm too scared to deal with that because, I don't know, just a lot of internalised fat for me. And I just really am sorry. <laughs> well, of course, the big news yesterday was the leadership spill, <laughs> which Malcolm Turnbull won. Yeah, but the great news is we don't need to look at that too much tonight because that's all settled now and we can move on. Exactly. It's all over. <laughs> let's cut to a boring news clip saying basically what we just said. And while we do, let's have a large drink of delicious water, assuming nothing major is going to happen. Cheers, Greg. Cheers. <laughs> In breaking news, Peter Dutton has just admitted he's plotting a second challenge against Malcolm Turnbull's leadership. the last bit. <laughs> uh. Worth it. <laughs> Did you even see that clip? No, I don't I have no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> Who cares? Anyway, well, that's the bloody news! <laughs>
Uh, OK, let's keep going. Here on Tonightly, we pride ourselves on covering all facets of the news cycle. Tonight, we introduce our new health and wellness correspondent, Anthea. She's here to delve into the new lifestyle trend taking Australia by storm. Hey sweets, Anthea here blessing you with some hashtag realness. Today we're talking lifestyle trends because life has to have style. As my mentor Mother Teresa once said, do good and look good doing it. Woo! <laughs> Over the last few years, there's been an explosion in popular lifestyle trends. There's the Scandi trend La Gomme, which is all about having not too much, not too little, but just the right amount of everything. There's Swedish death cleaning, <laughs> so fun. And of course, it all started with Danish trend, Hergur, where you're encouraged to make your life as cozy as possible and eat pudding, which is so brave. But as adorable as our little European friends are, it's time for a lifestyle trend that meets the needs of everyday Australians. So I've come up with our very own answer to Herge. It's called Nurries. It means no worries. I know what you're thinking. It means no worries. That's Hakuna Matata. <laughs> and babes, that is literally my favourite yoga pose. But Nurries is so much more than that. Nurries is an attitude. It's a way of life. Are you excited to try it out? Me too. <laughs> Stressed about work? Just say nurries and treat yourself to a well-earned day off. What's the worst that could happen? Can't be bothered hanging out with a friend you made plans with because she's a bit of a drag? Just say nurries and take your copy to go. <laughs> Happy birthday. Bye. <laughs> Overwhelmed by climate change threatening the planet and just not quite sure what to do? Just say nurries. No stress wrinkles here. That homeless person asking you for money makes you feel uncomfortable. Just say nurries and keep on walking. No, thank you. <laughs> so there you have it, sweets. Just say nurries and watch all your stresses melt away. Bye. Mm. <laughs> Great point. segment, Why the Fuck Not? Oh, this is a really good segment. Why the Fuck Not is a segment where, because we got cancelled, we just do whatever we want. It's Why great. the Fuck Not? I feel like... I feel like this whole episode could have been called that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who cares? Oh, Tom has bit. asked us for... <laughs> just got carried away. Tom has asked in previous episodes for viewers to write in with suggestions, but we aren't going to do that because, frankly, your suggestions are terrifying. Mm. Also, 99% of them are Bring Back Mr Oily. Yeah. So they're very unoriginal if, if you didn't see it, Mr Oily was me just covered in oil, slipping around on the ground. It was... The worst thing I've ever seen. That's the bar. My, um, my partner did text me saying she doesn't love me anymore. Anyway... <laughs> Today, we're going to do something really good. This is actually going to be important. I think this is quite good. I, I am going to teach young Nina here how to peel a prawn. What? So what we got we some do? get some prawns there. So I didn't discuss. Oh, look, I don't really want to, Greg. We're peeling oh. prawns, Nina, for Christ's sake. We're gonna peel oh a prawn. This so is bad. funny. This is good television. <laughs> Alright. So get a prawn. Okay. Get a prawn there. Get a get, get a little close-up shot. So here's the prawny. Let me look. Hello. And all you want to do first off is just twist the head like that. And you like want to just twist the head, pull it off, just chuck it in there. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks Thank for sticking you. around. And... <laughs> Thanks for supporting. Live, live comedy. Oh, these really, oh, these really stink. Really smell like, we're not so going to eat the prawns. These oh, are, I don't mind. I don't know. I'm pretty these hungry. Are rotten. Um, and so you, you go around the legs and sort of take the skin off like that. So it, oh, you've taken the tail off. Oh, That's fine. You, you do it as, as, as you, you like. You know. Yes. I'm the Bob Ross of prawn peeling. Um, <laughs> and then the last thing you want to do here is like the sort of little bit in the middle. They call that the vein. I call it the poop shoot. You just want to pull that out. Just sort of pull that down the middle there. And then you, your prawn's ready to eat. You go, I'm having a really good time yeah. with you peeling prawns. Yeah, me too. Another turning point, a <laughs> prawn stuck in the road. <laughs> time grabs you by the prawn, directs you where to go. So make the best of this prawn and don't ask why. It's not a lesson, but a prawn learning prawn. It's something unpredictable. Funny. But it's the end, it's prawn. I hope you've had the prawn of your prawn. 
This goes for five minutes. Yeah, we're just going to do the whole song. No, we're actually, we'll cut that there. Wait, can we yeah. just stop? <laughs> we'll finish it. Thanks. <laughs> Don't eat the porn. They stink. <laughs> now, Nigel Farage is coming to Australia for his tour in September. But you had the chance to interview him recently, didn't you? Yes, I did, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. Well, um, we'll cut to the clip then, I guess we'll take a, take a no, look. No, no, well, look, before we do, uh, all I want to say is that I was doing a character called New Reporter, where I played a new reporter who asks very soft questions and is generally not very good. Is that, is that, re is that really a character, or is it just a sh bit of a shit package? No, <laughs> it's like a really good... It? It's a character! No, okay, really good it's actor! Funny. Roll the tape! Yeah, okay, Roll the tape! Funny. Well, firstly, I just want to say thank you for coming on Tonightly. Um, it's Australia's number one talk show. Um, in Australia. I just want to ask, have you watched it by any chance? No, I haven't. I confess. I'm sorry, oh. but I will. I'll do my homework before I visit in September. What the hell, man? It's, like, really good. It's um, almost as funny as the late-night talk show in the UK called The Nigel Farage Show. The vast majority of women don't want to identify as feminists. Whilst Donald Trump may be rough round the edges, he gets things done, doesn't he? I do not believe that these women that are wearing the burqa are doing so of their own free will and choice. Yeah, well, that is pure comedy. Um, now, it's supposed to be a Syrian current, current affairs programme, uh, but uh, most people think it's just me being a clown on a stage. But, hey, do you know what? As long as they follow it, I don't care. So you're known as... Obviously, you're known as Nigel Farage, but you're also known as Mr Brexit. Mr Brexit. Mr Brexit. Mr Brexit. I was wondering, like, was it really hard to legally change your name? <laughs> Very difficult. Um, changing your name by deed poll is a difficult thing uh, and takes a long time. But isn't it a bit dangerous? Like, are you the only Mr Brexit in the phone book? Yes. Um, I mean, there were, at the time of the referendum, lots of Mr Brexits. Really? But they kind of all faded back into obscurity because, you know... They're frightened. Oh, are they worried they'll be associated with you? Um, well, many of the words that are associated with me I can't, I'm afraid, use on your programme because they're so unpleasant. So, I hear that you're coming to Australia soon. That's pretty exciting for us. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to our penal colony. Um, it's really exciting that you're coming to our penal colony and I is, just... Ah, now, is that to do with cricket, Nina? Is a penal colony... No, it's because we're a penal colony of England, uh, originally. OK. So we actually have one state of Australia called Western Australia. It has tried and failed to secede from the rest of the country many times. Um, as one of the figureheads of the Brexit movement, do you have any tips for Western Australian people? Yeah, absolutely. Make the arguments. Who wants to be governed by these awful people in the East? I mean, they're taking your taxes, your money, they're sending you know, <laughs> migrants to you, uh, they're taking your jobs. So, but at what point do we bring the Russian bots in? Ah, now, my advice on that is leave it till quite late, otherwise they might catch you. OK. Um, they're not actually as good as they're cracked up to be, uh, but they might just give you a helping hand over the line, you never know. Fantastic. And with that in mind, do you think there's going to be a second Brexit referendum? Oh, I do hope so. I mean, I don't really care about the policy, to be honest. Like, if I can be real with you, I don't really care about policy at all. I just want to know what it's going to be called. Like, so I have a few Brexit sequel names. Um, if I could just read them to you quickly. Um, the first one is Brexit 2, Brexistence is Futile. The second one is Brexit 2, Brexit at Tiffany's. Um, Brexit 2, Two United Two Kingdom. Brexit Two <laughs> Electric Brexaloo. And um, the last one is Brexit Two Son of Brexit. Which one's your favourite? Well, I think Brexit at Tiffin is. At least it sounds like it's got a certain bit of class to it. I have one more question. Um, so you ran Brexit campaign on the slogan... We want our country back! Which I think is a great slogan. Um, I really love it. And I also want my country back. Um, but the problem is I'm mixed race, so I've got two countries to choose from, Australia and Japan. Um, which country do I get back? Well, where, where do you live? Where do you pay your taxes? Australia. Well, it's got nothing to do with race. It's got to do with where you live, the community you're part of, okay, hang and on that's one the one you've got to Nigel fight for. Us. Just hang on one second. I just got to call. Um, hang. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you're dead to me. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thanks so much, Nigel Farage, Mr. Brexit. Uh, I'll see you later. Thank you. Good. Our comedy guests tonight will be touring sold-out Sydney Comedy Festival show Goodest Hits to Melbourne in November. For more information, check out their Facebook and Instagram at Songtourage. To, to perform their new song, Going Out Shirt, Go Nuts for Songtourage! Hello, hello! Thank you guys so much. Oh, my goodness. Oh.
Um, now, have you guys ever noticed that every single 18-year-old in the world has like a going out shirt? Like a, like a shirt that they've bought for the sole purpose of hitting up like a club in that brief moment in your life where you think that like going to a club is a good way to meet human beings and have a good time. <laughs> And it's like a navy blue dark shirt to make sure that you can't see any sweat patches or anything like that. And it's got this polyester sheen to it that can blind people at 20 metres. It's great. And if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, and you're looking around and you're going, I don't see any going out shirts, you're the one with the going out shirt. And this is a song for you. <laughs> First day out of high school and I'm single, finally old enough to get into a venue. I want a shirt as impressive as me that'll take away their breath and make them weak at the knees. Possibly a trim fit or a slim fit to add a little bit of zing to my Fitbit. I'm gonna borrow mum's MasterCard and go and turn myself into a work of art. Marching up the driveway of my dad's house in Kalara Prancing down the sidewalk to a Westfield round the corner I said, lady, can you bring me the generic one in the window? It's time to hit the nightlife with a going out shirt I'm an 18 year old chump and I wear what the fuck I want I'll be drowning in attention in my going out shirt One colour on the torso other colour on the neck $25 from Tarot Cash It's my going out shirt Now I'm on the train line Out of Bondi Looking shinier and brighter than a gold mine Got $10 on my Opal card But the parents said that they could pick me up in the car Working on my posture I'm a monster Feel amazing cause I'm looking like a pop star Now I'm waiting in the line at the club And the shirt is in position to provide the love Strolling through the entrance I just got past the bouncer Paying for a cider With a complimentary voucher I smell like David Beckham And I look like David Beckham Welcome to the party It's my going out shirt I'm a prepubescent flog And I dress like a total god I'm a lesson in seduction In my going out shirt Reversible leather belt Standard pair of chinos Links Africa all over me And my going out shirt <laughs> Music's loud Night is young Tastes so good that it hurts I love the air In my lungs Almost as much as my going out shirt Hold on just a minute What's that on the dance floor? I must be mistaken Something looks familiar <laughs> Shit, I can't believe it Is this really happening? Now I'm walking over Oi! That's, That's my shirt! <laughs> Hectic! <laughs> Today's our lucky day all of us fucking slay And now we'll slay together In our going out shirts We'll dance next to a stranger And purchase five kebabs And then go home feeling angry In our going out shirts Ooh. Going out shirts Ooh. Going out shirts One colour on the torso Other colour on the neck $25 from Tarot Cash, it's my going out shirt. Tonight on Comedy, you can moan or groan, or you can discover the moaning of life. No, it's not a typo.